Welcome back to the second part of the tutorial. I will present you uh, shortly um, the MLR3 machine learning framework, um, which we use for modeling um, the data. Um, you probably have heard of R. It's an open source software, um, statistical programming language, which is uh, yeah, freely available. There's a lot of content in the internet and is often used in spatial data analyses. Uh, we will uh, give you some links if you're new to R uh, to um, get yourself familiar with the language and common um, methods and common functions to use. In this tutorial, we will use remote sensing data to model the, um, the grassland surface in this uh, subset I've shown before to see. Um, whether the shrub coverage has increased uh, or decreased and in which areas of that of that subset um, this um, yeah, expansion happens um, and to see if there were any controls uh, happening in that area. Um, to, we do this to this end that uh, if we scale that on a landscape, um, the users, the, the farmers can get maps uh, to see if their plots are vulnerable to bush encroachment uh, and to see um, how much area already is encroached. We are now on the GitHub page uh, of this tutorial. Here we can see uh, a short introduction to what I've already said on the slangbush problem in South Africa. Here we find uh, further resources. Um, for example, these pictures or this um, time series I've already shown. And we uh, find basics on the MLR framework. So MLR, what is it? It's a package. Uh, it's basically a, a universe uh, of um, packages that uh, uses uh, machine learning algorithms that have already been implemented in R, uh, use them and um, work with them in an integrated framework, meaning that you don't have to change the interface to an algorithm when you're using MLR, because it's sometimes really hard to compare different approaches when using different modeling algorithms. That's why it comes really handy for quick modeling and comparison between algorithms, between data sets, um, and yeah, between validation um, procedures and so on. It is the successor of MLR that has been a machine learning framework before and it's been first released in 2019 and is still growing. It has a growing community and growing repository. Um, it has different um, types of machine learning, for example, classification tasks, regression tasks, or survival analysis. It's fully impl implemented in the R software, as I've already introduced, and uses the interface to the learners, so-called learners. For example, the random forest algorithm that is implemented in the Ranger package or the SVM um, algorithm that is implemented in E1071. In this tutorial, we use random forest. Random forest is a machine learning algorithm that is non-parametric. That means there are no model coefficients involved. Um, that means that we do not um, do pre-assumptions on our data. Uh, that's why it is often used in remote sensing um, data because it's really, it has, remote sensing data has a lot of dimensions, a lot of uh, unknown uh, correlations. That's why non-parametric models, models are often superior. And random forest is really um, highly used in, in Earth observation modeling. MLR3 is further useful for tuning models. We come to that um, in a minute. And feature selection and further um, uh, methods to compare the models and uh, to make it faster on, on your device. 
Uh, there's a link to the MLR3 repository. And now we go quickly into the basics on what a model is. What does modeling mean? Um, model, a model is an abstraction of the reality. Uh, when we do natural sciences, uh, we only have restricted ac access to training data or data in place. Uh, that's why we uh, want to uh, use uh, abstraction of that data and correlations within the data to uh, transfer it to other areas. That's why we model. Um, MLR3 uh, provides a framework for, for doing that by using uh, different terms. For example, starting with the task or the data. You have data, um, you can store that as a task where you specify if you want to do a classification task, a regression task, and what uh, data input you have. Mm. Then, typically, uh, these sets of data are split up in training and test sets. And only the training set is used for train for training um, a learner. And we've we've already seen that a learner is an algorithm that uses the data and fits to the data to predict on other data. Mm. So only um, the learner is only fitted to the training set, keeping the test set aside. Then the model is built up and predictions can be run. The predictions are usually run on the test set. Or if you want to transfer it to other areas, you can use new data um, to um, use your model for these predictions. And then you always perform uh, um, yeah, some uh, measures of stability called performance measures um, to see um, if the algorithm, algorithm is working um, as expected. Repeating all that, cycle of modeling is called resampling in this MLR3 wording and it's really necessary to see if the modeling um, has a stable output. In the next step we will start our actual tutorial.